am so excited and emotional at the same time. I'm going to take you somewhere today that I spent many, 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 many days teaching bushcraft and survival with some really good people. Met some really good people over the years, made some really good friends and got a real connection to this forest. And it was like coming home driving down the driveway to this place. And that place is Hatfield Forest in Essex, the jewel of Essex. It's a real emerald, it's a beautiful place. If you don't know about it, watch this video and I'll show you about this absolutely fantastic forest. Come and have a look, eh? Right, we're at the main centre. There's a cafe here, there used to be a shop. There's no longer a shop. There's a nice cafe down the bottom here. This is owned by the National Trust and it's a thousand acre complete forest. And I believe the last complete working forest in Europe, certainly in Great Britain. And it is beautiful. Lots changed since I last come. There's a lot of memories here. The old jack doors are still here, which are lovely to see and hear. And I've come to see an old friend of this beautiful oak. Look at this, look. The lakes and gardens were designed by Capability Brown and we're going to have a walk around a lake, see what bird life's here and what nature's about. You see there's a lot of jackdaws and a raven, but look at that tree. If you want to see some magnificent, magnificent trees in Essex, this is the place to come. And over there is another old friend, a cedar of Lebanon. It's actually a tree that features on the Lebanese flag. And there's forests of them over there. And the Persians used to use the sap from that as part of their embalming process. And that is a beautiful tree. We'll take you around this absolutely beautiful forest. This is going to be the first of a couple of videos, I suppose. I'll do a few in a because there's no way I'm going to be able to show you all the way around here in one go. Over there used to be a big hawthorn thicket and now it's cleared. They do a lot of work here. A forest, a place of trees and a place where the gentry used to keep their game. And over the back there is a warrener's cottage because there used to be an old medieval rabbit warrens over there where they used to breed and keep the rabbits in the olden days and they used to be looked after by the warreners, quite formidable chaps with long dogs, long coats and big sticks. So catch anyone red-handed stealing the king's game and that's where the term caught red-handed come from. Because when the gamekeepers used to catch the poachers with the blood on their hands that was the red hand, caught red-handed. But we're going to have a little look around the lake, get some wildlife pho photography done. Sammy's got a new camera. Get over and subscribe to Sammy. She's got her channel up and running now, Sammy's Witchcrafts. She's really enjoying it. So go over and support her. And um, I'm going to show you some nature and some trees and just what's about here. It's flipping beautiful. I can't explain to you how good I feel here. I'm getting my green fix. Let's go and have a look about, eh? So I'm going to take you over and show you a special building here at the centre. I'm just taking you around the back of the cafe at the moment. Oh, food smells nice. I've had many a meal out there. Chili and chips. Oh, But in the discovery room, they sell books. So we're going to go and have a look, see what books they've got for sale. Let me show you. There's the discovery room. You walk around the side of the cafe there and come into the discovery room. all your books cooking nature 
Let's have a look what we got here. Lecture box. Hugh Falcus. I did a video review on this book. That is an amazing book. Absolutely amazing book. Let's have a look what I can get. Right, this is Shell House. Look at that. All the shells up there. Oyster shells, conch shells. Flint faced. We're at the lake at the moment. We're just going to go and have a look around the wildlife pond. Just want you to come over and stand right in front of this. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. And I'm going to say that quite a lot while I'm here. But behind us takes you into another vast area of forest. You can walk around here all day. I suggest you get a map at the centre because the amount of people I've helped on this forest that have been lost is unbelievable. And we used to have a big campsite over the back, which we're going to walk to now, around the back of the wildlife pond. And I used to put a parachute up, get all the chairs, have a fire there, and people used to come. And we used to teach them bushcraft and tracking. It's a fantastic place to track around. And British woodland and forests are one of the most difficult places to track in. As nine times out of ten, the forest floor is all covered in leaf litter. And it takes a different type of skill tracking on leaf litter than it does tracking on sand or mud, because it's a lot easier on sand or mud. So the only problem here is a man-made one and that's it's pretty much under the flight path for Stansted Airport which is a bit of a pain but you don't really hear them very much. Sammy's gone wandering up there because she don't know where she's going and we're gonna go around a little pond here and show you over there. Let me introduce you to this magnificent tree. Look at that. What a tree. And this is a yew tree. And this will always be ingrained in my mind. Because look at this. How that's grown. Looks like a bull's head, doesn't it? The cow horns sticking out. Look, one up, one down. I got chased by a cow like that once. One up, one down. But look at that tree. Taxa baccata is the Latin name for that and every part of it is extremely toxic and taxa is where the word toxic comes from it's a derivative of that word and the only part that's not poisonous see that berry that sticky substance around that berry that's dripping out there is the only part of that tree that is not deadly toxic however the little seed inside is extremely extremely toxic now the way this tree reproduces or spreads its seeds is it's very clever because it provides this beautiful sweet sticky substance around the outside of that seed okay the seed travels through the bird's body that little brown seed the bird then poops it out and then that's how it grows now this tree is probably a calaced group of trees that's grown into one. And an old name for this tree is the Tree of Lovers. Because this used to be revered by the pagans. It's an old pagan tree because it always looks alive. It's always got its needles on, as you can see. And old pagan burials generally people used to live around the same sort of time many many hundreds of years ago and life span wasn't very long so they used to bury 
people with a sprig of this with the berries on in their pockets. Obviously, they didn't dig six foot graves back in those days. So, Mr. and Mrs. Hatfield Forest would be buried together with these seeds in. You can see inside there the little seed. Those seeds would germinate in a beautiful compost that is a body. And the trees used to emerge from the graves separately like that and then as they grow they grew larger and larger and larger and larger and then the trees collapsed into one tree hence giving it the name tree of lovers also it's known as the tree of life if you chop that tree no one will ever in half the sapwood of you is red dark red so they used to believe as well that that was the blood of their ancestors being sucked up through the tree there's lots and lots of folklore and history surrounding you the yew tree it was how our archers become so formidable with the English yew longbows this is basically a laminated wood so the sapwood is very hard and the outer whiter wood is very elastic giving you a really good compression bow and these bows 100 odd pound bows look at that what a beautiful beautiful tree so that is the yew stand here all day and talk about this look at them berries now horses have been found dead with these boughs hanging out of their mouth that's how toxic it is and back in the old days well not so long ago to be fair they used to trim all the yew hedges and keep the little tips and make an anti-cancer drug out of that out of the toxin in the actual tree but every part of that tree is deadly as i say apart from the sticky red outer coating of those berries do not attempt to eat anything off these trees at all deadly poisonous let's flip you around now when i'm taking you out and about for walks i'll show you bits and pieces but i do not advocate unless you're with someone who really knows what they're doing you start trying things that you find outside because a lot of fungi especially can look the same one could end your life one could give you a nasty tummy upset and the others are all right. If I show you anything that looks or is absolutely 100% identified, then I'll say this is edible. But I don't generally tell people, oh, you can eat this, you can eat that, unless I'm 100% sure. And I don't advocate you actually doing it, especially with fun guys, I say. Let's have a little look around here. It's beautiful. Just feels really nice. There's another nice tree there, London Plain. The bark on that sheds off naturally, and that's what they introduced into London down the streets, because it's one of the only trees that could live in the smog-filled streets of London, because the, sh the bark actually sheds off the outside, allowing the tree to breathe and photosynthesize properly. And that was one of the big contributors of cleaning up the air of London. A plain, London plain. There's the leaves up there. And they've got like a fuzzy ball type seed pod. Look at this. Look. I've seen here herds of up to 80 fallow deer, muntjac, all kinds of birds that I could stand here and talk to you about all day. Coming this way mate. Stoats, weasels, badgers, foxes. And I've spent many, many a night asleep in this woodland and just laying there awake and listening to the tawny owls calling. I mean, where do you get 
in Essex, trees like that. I'll stand next to that tree, shall I? Just to give a bit of perspective. Look how big that tree is. There are some really ancient trees. If you're a tree nerd like me, this is an absolute must of a place to come to. That has got to be hundreds and hundreds of years old, that oak. Look at that. What a place. And a lot of the areas around here as well are full of hazel. They're hazel coppices. Oh, they're full of squirrels as well. Someone's seen a squirrel. Now, coppicing comes from the French word coupe, to cut. It was brought over by the Normans, this idea, and it was a way to get a crop out of a tree. You can see that one, I call them walking stick trees. I make fantastic walking sticks out of these. But if you see that tree, that's a big tree that's been cut off at the bottom, and it shoots out these sun shoots, and that's used as a crop for pea sticks, and predominantly in these areas, it'll be used for charcoal. Once it gets to about wrist size, it makes a fantastic charcoal. So all the coppices would have had their own set, their own part of this wood, the commoners. And these banks you see around, they're called wood banks and they separate the forest into different coppices. So they can be rotated as a crop. So this would all be cut down, all the wood used. They'd make a charcoal burner, which is basically pile all the wood up, cover it in earth, set fire to it, exclude all the oxygen, and it smoulders away inside and doesn't burst into flames. And then the resulting carbonated burnt wood is what you get, and that's charcoal. So hazel trees also, the squirrels flipping love them, obviously, because of the hazelnuts. Beautiful, that oak, oh, stunning. Let's have a little look through here. So that's the walk around the outside. That'll take you down to where we used to run our courses. And along here you've got all the hawthorn with the berries on. Now hawfinches have been seen in this forest. I think they get seen every year, one or two. I've actually seen a big flock of wax wings here as well. But you've got silver birch, Lady of the Woods there, look. Betula pendula, ivy, all the blackberries. Gorgeous, just to go and sit in there. I'll put a link up to something I did, a video I did a while ago, called a sit spot, which is part of tracking really. Without sounding too woo-woo, it allows you to become a part of your environment. It zones you in and tunes you in to what's going on around you in a forest. I'll send that. I'll send you over to that by a, a link. It'll be up here. And if you look in the information below, there'll be a little link to that video as well there, so you can have a look at that. That's quite a nice, peaceful video. Shaky, shaky, shaky. I want to take you and show you that cedar of Lebanon. That's a cracker of a tree. But it's changed around here so much. Again, this is a forest. It's a man-managed or human-managed place. And the old deadwood needs cutting out. The trees need trimming up and haircuts. It needs to be kept on top form, which it is. The guys here absolutely work their bits off. I know that for a fact. Sometimes they have to shut the forest. I think it's a, if the wind goes around about 30 mile an hour, they have to close the forest, just in case someone gets clubbed on the head by a big branch, because the forest is a dangerous place in the wind. When I was actually on Facebook, bloody the amount of people that used to moan, oh, why have you shut the forest? It's our place where you can go and walk. Well, actually, it's owned by the National Trust. They gracefully allow you to come and walk around this forest. You have to pay a fee to park. I think it's about eight quid if you're not a National Trust member. 
but if you are free to come and park, so I've just spotted dear old mate. I'm gonna go and see. Let's go and see him. So I've just come back for a drink. Just gonna get a coffee or something. Maybe a sandwich. And then we're gonna go for another explore. Just had a nice chat with a lovely bloke. Works here, he's worked here for 25 years. Mr. Ian Pease, if you're watching this Ian, you are a flipping darling. You're a very nice man, it's a pleasure to know you. Lovely to chat to you. And we'll come down that Georgie and have a, uh, she is. and have a beer and a bit of a jammy session with you, mate. How's that? Anyway, let's get something to eat and drink, and then we're going to take you round the forest to show you what's about. So I'm going to take you over to show you this uh, cedar of Lebanon. But if you see this fence around the outside of this tree here, <clears throat> the reason that's there is because of the constant human footfall around its roots and what happens there is it compacts the earth around the tree roots and basically strangles the tree roots so they put these chestnut fencing around these old trees to allow the worms and the plants and everything to do it do their work around the tree roots and that prolongs the life of the tree because obviously there's a lot of footfall around here which is can be quite a problem. They do shut the footpaths off, spin it around. They do shut the footpaths off from time to time to allow them to grass back up again because human footfall is quite a problem or has been in the past over here and then they manage that. But let's just take you over and show you this Cedar of Lebanon. It's flipping beautiful. Look at that beauty. That's the tree I was telling you about earlier on. But the pine cones, or cedar cones, are huge off of that when they grow and fall. What a spectacular tree. Look at the base of that. That is just huge. See Sammy next to it. It's an absolutely huge tree. Beautiful. What you're looking at now is the old London road that goes right away through Hatfield Forest. It's a 403.2 hectare biological site of special scientific interest in Essex. Triple SI site. It's near Bishop Stortford and Stansted Airport. And as you can see, what a fabulous place. Oh, this is where I used to run bushcraft and tracking courses. Right where I am now. Wow. This brings back memories. I'll flip you around and show you where I used to be. So that there is where I used to put my tent. My TP used to go there. And my Land Rover used to park there. Partner in crime used to have his tent there underneath that old tree. And then this is where we'd set up our courses. Look at this. A beautiful coppiced hazel there. Nice walking sticks amongst there. And then we'd come through here. Late spring, this is full of cherries here, these are all wild cherries. And here's one of my old stumps. Look! Wow! And this is where we used to run our courses. We used to rig a parachute up between that tree there and that one over there. Over this area, and this is where we all sat. And used to sit around the fire having lessons. There's, a, there's some lovely badger sets around here as well. Seen lots of badgers around Hatfield Forest. Spent many an hour watching them scratch their tummies and mooching around. I was actually laying. Hey look, there's the stumps. I'm gonna sit on one of them for old time's sake. I was actually laying on a pathway once, stalking up to some badgers. 
and just have a sit down here. Ah, like, oh. oh, that brings back memories. Nice cold, wet tree stump. Yeah, I was laying on a footpath on a badger trail, watching the badgers in the distance, and then to my excitement, towards me, come running a mother and a cub. And literally, yeah, they got, with, got within 10, 12 feet of me and stopped, and they was just looking at me. The front one, the mum, was looking at me for what seemed like an eternity. And then she must have thought, so wrong now. So she turned round quickly and trotted off. And the young badger behind her was so shocked, it jumped up in the air, basically jumped over the top of its mother and just stood there looking around like, where's mum gone? And then she turned around and just trotted off after its mum. Very special moment that we've seen. Fellow deer. Young over here, curled up in the undergrowth, all camoed up, just sitting there, waiting for the mum. It's beautiful. Yeah, very nostalgic. Let's spin you around and see what I can see. Nice to see, there's still a nice supply of dry firewood there we used to use. Kids have made a, or people have made a, some sort of rudimentary lean-to shelter there, which is a wonderful, wonderful source of dry firewood. Look at that. And there's the stumps, that one's looking a bit worse for wear now. Every now and then used to turn one and there was a toad underneath. But, what a special place. As I say, I won't be able to do all this video in, in one video. We'll have to come back. I want to come over here and do some deer tracking. And I'll bring you then and show you some tracking skills. See if we can get close to some deer. But we're going to leave this magical part of the forest. As I say, it's a thousand acres. And it's not really badly split up. Like Epping Forest, there's roads everywhere. It's like a lot of little woodlands now rather than a massive forest. But this is just literally a thousand acres of forest land and footpaths you can come and walk around. Thanks to the National Trust and they look after it very well. I'm going to take you back over to the Takely Road, I think, side of the forest. And walk down one of the wants crossways. Apparently a want used to be a, a track or a, an old medieval roadway but we take you over i'll show you forest lodge oh i've always wanted to live there oh my god you won't until you see that place and there's a little pine stand here over the back there which i've heard ravens calling from and we're going to go and have a look through that and that goes between the pine stand and another little area we used to call munty mountain because if you'd go and sit over there in an the evening you were guaranteed to see muntjac deer. They just come poodling past you without care in the world. Absolutely stunning. We beasties. But as I say, here you have fallow, huge herds of fallow, which are managed on, on the forest site. You can also buy your venison from here in the autumn and firewood. Oh, the shop, I was talking to Ian. And uh, he said the shop will be open in a little while, sort of in the autumn. And they're going to sell firewood and venison in there. And they sell other little National Trust knickknacks in there. Let's take you over and show you Forest Lodge, because that's a bit special. In there we've got a fantastic tree. I might mention this in one of my other videos, but the berries wasn't ripened at that point. But that in there is a spindle tree. Now here's the berry. Yeah. Look at that, it's like a little pink heart shaped berry. And this one's huge, so that'll be very old, it's very slow growing, very white, light wood. They used to use it for cotton reels, 
back in the day, you know the old white cotton reels. That's a beautiful tree, really big one. And it's a spindle tree, there's the leaves. And she's in there, growing up, and that's a really good indicator. If you see a big one of those in a hedgerow, that's a really good indicator that that hedgerow is an ancient hedgerow and quite a special habitat, so keep an eye out for those. Spindle tree, pretty berries, aren't they? Uh, look at that, I don't know if you can see that. That is Forest Lodge. That is some special house in there. That's absolutely beautiful. It's a privately owned house now, but I've been in there and that's absolutely gorgeous. Looks like we've got some big doggies in there now, so we won't go over there. But that's very special there. And they have all this land. So they've had all sorts. Ian actually has a rare, be rare breed sheep that he keeps on land over the forest just to there we go, big dog. To keep with the innkeeping of the forest, the theme of the for forest. As I say, everything's done here for a purpose. It's a very purposeful place, although engulfed in nature. But up there, I've actually seen a white badger run down that track. There. Really nice. We're going to walk around the outside of these trees and down a little footpath. Yeah. A lovely day. There's a beautiful old tree. It's a hornbeam. Horn being the old word for hard, and beam being the old word for tree. It's called a hop hornbeam. See these little seedlets hanging down there? They hang down like hops, but that's a very hard, hard wood very hard wood, it made the best charcoal and around near me there's a lot of them, it's a sort of a south tree around me in the sort of Brentwood area there's a lot of hornbeam around and they used to make cattle and um, bulls yokes for pulling the carts and the farm machinery around and also it makes the finest charcoal and some of that charcoal it was made from hornbeam from around some of my old local haunts was used in the making of the gunpowder that went underneath the houses of parliament there we go didn't go off never mind that squawking bird you can hear now is a jay the Eurasian Jay. And this is something you have to listen to, and listen out for in a forest, because that indicates to me that there's something there that the Jay doesn't like. That's an alarm call. So, around there is something, maybe a bird of prey or predator of some kind, maybe a fox or a stoat or an owl, I can see him flying around but there's something in there, I've actually tracked up on a pair of these birds just beyond where I'm standing there actually and I could hear them making a hell of a racket and I've got in there quietly, walked up and they were mobbing a buzzard and he was branched up and he sat there for ages I was just plump my bum down beside a tree and watched these two jays irritating this buzzard that was a beautiful sight i was literally underneath them i was more interested in buzzing dive bombing this buzzard but they're lovely birds beautiful really iridescent blue feathers on the wings i don't know if you can hear that knocking but up there we have a woodpecker Probably a great spotted. He's up there feeding away. Some of these old ash trees don't look too good. There's a disease that's come over called ash dieback. And it's killing off our native ash. 
I'm standing waiting for that woodpecker to show. As I'm standing there, I've got this really intense smell of menthol coming up. And down here, just here. Is this plant water mint? I think it's mentha aquatica, I think is the scientific name for it. But it's got a huge menthol aroma to it. Beautiful. And you can steep that in hot water if you've got a cold. Because it's a member of the mint family, it's menthol. Mentha. Beautiful, isn't it? And here's the reason why they shut the forest when the winds go over 25 mile an hour, 30 mile an hour. There you go. That'd spoil your day if that landed on your head. I don't think people understand just how serious it can be. You get a bit of wood blown out of a tree at 30 mile an hour, it comes flying down towards you. A lot. That's why hanging up branches in the tops of trees are called widow makers. And the old squirrels been here. You actually see the chew marks on the outside of that acorn. Where the squirrels been sitting up here. The squirrels usually feed from a vantage point. There's another oak acorn up the top there. And they'll sit there because they can see all round them. Keeping an eye out for predators. This is one of those unmistakable fungi. Always see this on oak. And this fungi is known as a beefsteak fungus. And I'll just take a slight slice off of it. It's a parasitic fungi. And I'll show you why it's called beefsteak fungi. I've actually eaten this, it's high in tannins, however you can simmer it quite a lot, oh, there's the glasses. you can simmer it and change the water, I'll just take a slice of this off and show you why it's called beefsteak. Look at that, it looks like a slice of beef. Bit of a bushcrafter stash here. This is silver birch bark and that contains a lot of oil and you can use that as an absolutely superb tinder. That could be submerged in water, brought out, wiped dry, scraped up and used as a tinder because it contains all the oils out of the bark. But this is a, out of the tree. But this is another reason why you never camp too near or you have to be really aware of silver birch. This stuff is what the Native American Indians or the First Nations people used to make their canoes out of. Obviously it's slower growing in Canada and the bark is a lot thicker than that. You can still make stuff out of it. I've made some stuff out of this bark before. Little pots. But that can take up to 200 years to degrade if it's in Canada because it's a lot thicker and contains a lot more oils. That's why they made the canoes out of it. So you might be parked up next to a tree and think it's alive but the scent of wood will be rotten as a rotten thing. And usually the tops like to snap off a silver birch when they're in that way. So you have to be a bit careful you don't get speared in the woods. Just walking through this ancient pasture land. There's huge swathes of it over here. And uh, it's absolutely teeming with yellow meadow ants. Now I've actually been lucky enough to see them emerge as queens twice in my years over here. And uh, they are a true indicator of ancient pasture land. Just pasture land that's been grazed and not mucked about with, not ploughed, not messed around with anyway. No insecticides. And that's what this place is all about. Complete and utter naturally nature. Beautiful. I mean, look at these hawthorn berries on these trees here. And we're heading over there. So there's some huge sweet chestnuts over there. I was going to walk over the other side of the forest, 
but we've been here about four hours we're walking around already looking at stuff so Sammy's getting some photographs we've just been watching the kites uh, as you can see clouds coming over we're at the end of our summer now this is probably one of the last warm days we're going to get and uh, yeah head back towards the lake I'm going to show you the lake just seen two green woodpeckers and a jay which is nice Ooh. and this is the yellow meadow ants I was telling you about here that's the yellow meadow ant hills and here you have beautiful sweet chestnut trees and I've sat in there before and called a tawny owl right the way down the London plain the old London road into one of these trees and it sat right above our heads. That was a very special moment. But these sweet chestnuts, when they're fully ripe, are some of the biggest I've ever seen. They're huge. Get a real good feed off of them. Introduced by the Romans. What did the Romans ever do for us? Sweet chestnut, one of them. But yeah. That's a beautiful little chestnut coppice there. Or I say coppice. They're great big trees. In amongst that. Hey, look up there, look. There's loads of them now. This tree is absolutely heaving with them. Maybe I'll get back. And grab some if we ain't somewhere else. I think we're gonna be somewhere else though. Alright, here's the road. a huge swathe of forest there and big open plains over the back of there and that's where over the back of that part of the forest is where I used to run my courses but we're gonna walk over there today I've changed my mind I used to be indecisive but I don't really know if I am anymore so we're heading back over towards the lake now as there's a little hide over there which is quite nice. You can see those sweet chestnuts behind here now. Beautiful trees, beautiful. Oh, and look, here we are, look at this. Nice close-up shots of this, look. And there's your mistletoe. Look at that, berries are on there, they'll be going white soon. And that's on this hawthorn. We're going over to this part over here, and that bit there, if I remember correctly, is called the amphitheatre because it comes round, it's like a bowl. There's a nice little bit of shady woodland there. And there's another car park as you come down the, the roadway, just over there on the back of the lake, which is quite nice to park up for the day. Now he's standing under the mistletoe. Looks like she smelled something. Oh, but I don't know what she's doing with her lips. Hang on. Back of the lake. Now one would think that you'd be tripping over wildlife in a forest. Wouldn't one. However, a thousand acres of forest is a lot of hiding spaces for animals. Most of the wildlife over here is sort of crepuscular. A crepuscular means it comes out in the evenings. We've got nocturnal, night, diurnal, daytime, crepuscular, I love that word. It's sort of dawn and dusk really, but dusk. So you very rarely see, in the daytime, much wildlife. We've seen tits, um, long tails, long tail tits, cold tits, great tits. We've seen, I've seen three green woodpeckers, heard a great, great spotted woodpecker. We've seen buzzards, kites. But we've seen no deer today. I think what I'll do is 
Next time we're back, we shall drop drop old Shag Nasty off. And me mum and dad's come over and do a bit of proper tracking. Oh, here's an interesting tree. And this beautiful tree here is a beech. A beech tree. Look at that. Now they said it was a mast here, didn't they? Oh, I did. And we got the beech here and in these little... Look! Oh, which I can't get. There we go. In amongst here are these. Beech mast. Now a beech seed. Or mast. There's a little nut in the middle and that is delicious. Let me tell you that, it's delicious. And um, beech is a very unusual tree. If I just squeeze through here. If you notice underneath beech, not a lot of foliage around on the ground. The beech are quite high in tannins. And this is one tree you do not want to camp under. If you see a beech, generally underneath it's like this. The leaves are very high in tannins. And obviously they've got a lot of leaves. They drop them on the ground and the tannin leaches into the ground. And prevents a lot of plants from growing initially. But also they've got a lot of surface roots. I'm trying to find one. Usually you end up tripping ass over elbow over one. But they've got a lot of ground like surface roots which absorb loads of water before any other plants can get to it so underneath beach you usually find that people go oh look at it here it's a lovely camping place however if you look at that tree there and this is not a very old one there is the makings of a split now I haven't seen one at the moment but you get a bracket fungi on there, the artist's palette bracket fungi, or Ganoderma. And they called it the artist's palette because underneath, when it's growing, is really white. And artists, many moons ago, because paper used to be very expensive, they used to break one of these palettes off and produce a piece of artwork on the white underneath the fungi, underneath the shell fungi, bracket fungi. Then they used to take it along to a wealthy person and say, look, I need sponsoring into art college, basically. This is what, what I can do. Will you sponsor me? And if the wealthy person thought, whoa, yeah, I could make a bit of money here, they'd stick them in art college. And then once left college and the artist was making money, if any, you pay some back to the man or woman and some. So this tr that bracket fungi, Ganoderma, I think it's saprophytic. Now saprophytic fungi live on dead wood. And parasitic fungi live on living wood. And it rots out the middle of the trees. So, when the limbs become huge, and these limbs on these trees become huge, especially if they've been pollarded. A pollarding is where they cut the tops of the tree off to produce a crop like they would do a coppice. Coppice is down low, pollarding is up high. And they used to pollard up high to stop cattle and deer from browsing on the leaves, ruining the crop. And beech is a pollardable tree producing really nice poles so if you get one of those that's been left the branches well the branches on it are like that sometimes thick and you can see this one the branches are really thick and it grows like that huh? and along with the Ganoderma and a bit of wind those branches can fall off and they can weigh tons and tons and tons and tons and then when they fall on you while you're asleep underneath it because you thought you found a nice camping spot 
There's not a lot left of you in the morning. If one falls on you. So yeah. Beach. You found a beach nut? I've been eating them. scoffing them. Just peeling it. Look at that. It's well nice. There we go. And that's a beach nut. Full of oils. Lovely. And that's why you find farmers in France and this country graze their pigs underneath here because they feed up and get fat on the oily nuts. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Bit like a hazelnut. Bit. But very nice. So that's the beach. Hello. Mrs. Beach. See that in there? I'll zoom in a bit, but that's a comma butterfly. I've took some photographs. It's actually cool because underneath its wing now, there's a little white dot that looks like a comma. But as you can see, you can see, I'll put a photograph up anyway. But it's hugely camouflaged when it's closed its wings. Beautiful when open. Just see that little white comma underneath. See that bit there. Just there is where they launch the boats. You can hire boats here in the summer to go for a nice little bit of boating around the lake. A bit around the boardwalk now. Coming back round to the back of the lake. Just met a lady and a gentleman and they said, there's a jay in front of us. And they said they'd just seen the kingfisher on the duck pond, that little lake. So we're going to have one little stop there on the way back round. It's got to walk past it. And then we're off. And then I've got a little giveaway. How exciting. And I'll show you what that is when we get back to the car. What do you say, boy? Squirrels. Seems some squirrels, Raven. Yeah. Hmm, where are they? Where's those girls? Out there. So I hope you enjoyed that walk round with us today, round the beautiful Jewel of Essex, Hatfield Forest. What a place. I'll come back and do some more videos here because simply we've been here for about four and a half hours walking around now. And uh, we're heading back to my mum and dad's for some pie and mash and liquor. Oh, my favourite. Hope we got eels. And I'd just like to say thank you to all my subscribers for subscribing and all my new subscribers. Thanks for popping along and checking me out, checking my videos out. And uh, share about if you can. Send them to people that you think might like a bit of peaceful relaxation of listening to old JP's dulcet tones. Anyway. I've got a giveaway. I found this book in the little book depository and it is this one. Hugh Falcus. Now this was first published in 1978. I think you see that. There's the old boy there with his labs. Hugh Falcus. Now I cut my teeth on this book. I used to read it and flick through it and read it and flick through it. It's a fantastic book to start getting into the natural world. Really good. A lot of information in it. And I've just found a copy of it. And I thought to myself, who deserves that? Well, one of you do. It's a really, really good book. You can have a little look at it on Google if you want to check it out. But I've got a video about this book. And I'll put a link up the top now and it'll be in the information below. Go over and watch that and it'll tell you about this book. Now all we've got to do is like, be a subscriber, like and comment on this video. And then I'll get one picked out at random for the next video. No, Sunday. Next Sunday's video. And uh, one of you lucky, lucky people are going to win it. Going to get it. But you've got to be in it to win it. So check it out. Like, subscribe and comment below and then I'll pick you out randomly and I'll get this off to you. Doesn't matter where in the world it is, I'm going to send it to you, alright? How's that? Because I'm that kind for Nixie, nothing, nada. 
All right, so there you go. Hugh Falcus, Nature Detective. Flipping brilliant book. Anyway, I've had enough. The pie mash shop's calling me. So you stay safe. Stay sane. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Love to you all. Thank you so much for making my YouTube channel worth doing. Bye. Mmm. Pie and mash. Nom nom nom. <laughs>